Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about video aspect ratios and the history of how motion picture has changed shape over time. Now before we get into the history lesson, let's just start by talking about what aspect ratio is. Aspect ratio can be described as the ratio of the width to the height of an image. Aspect ratio is usually expressed in the form of two numerical numbers, though it can sometimes be shown in the form of a decimal number. An aspect ratio of 16 by 9 simply means that we have a picture with 16 horizontal units and 9 vertical units. Also, an aspect ratio of 2.35 in decimal form simply means we have 2.35 horizontal units and one vertical unit. So every aspect ratio in decimal notation denotes a picture with a vertical height of one unit or one part. So where did aspect ratio come from? Well, to make a long story short, the very first aspect ratio was introduced by a man known as William Dixon, who was a photographer. William worked for a man called Thomas Edison, who wanted to experiment with one of the first mass-produced Kodak film types in the form of flexible 35mm film in the 1890s. The resulting picture was 24.892mm by 18.669mm, which gives us an aspect ratio of 1.33. This would effectively become the birth of the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. In 1909, the Motion Picture Patent Company declared 35mm film with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio as the standard for all films in the United States. That pretty much standardized motion picture, and for a very long time, video was produced in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio up until 1929 when synchronized sound came into the mix. The optical soundtrack ran on the side of the film, meaning that a little space had to be created to allow for the audio track. In 1932, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences declared that the 1.33 or 4 by 3 aspect ratio would be slightly tweaked to 1.37 by slightly cutting off the top and bottom of the original image to accommodate the audio track. As you can probably tell, the 1.33 and 1.37 aspect ratios are very similar and hence were used interchangeably in a lot of cases. Move on a couple years later and in 1952 a film was released in the 2.59 aspect ratio which was completely unheard of but this was the birth of a new kind of cinema image. To achieve this aspect ratio, a multi-camera system dubbed Cinerama that used three 35mm cameras, all shooting with 27mm lenses, allowed for a 147 degree field of view at an aspect ratio of 2.59 by 1. The motion picture named This is Cinerama was projected on a curved screen by three projectors with a seven track surround sound system and went on to be a huge success. Now, as you'd imagine, Cinerama was highly impractical. Firstly, you only had one focal length to work with and it was extremely expensive to display and shoot. But one thing that was unmistakable amongst the public was the love for widescreen. Filmmakers continued to experiment with aspect ratios in an attempt to achieve a pleasing but practical widescreen image. And in 1953, 20th Century Fox teamed up with the inventor of the anamorphoscope technique, Professor Henry Crescian. Using an anamorphic lens through a process Fox called Cinemascope, they were able to deliver a 2.35 aspect ratio from traditional 35mm film. Cinemascope was first used in a film later that year. Cinemascope was hugely successful because it was practical and didn't require as much capital as the Cinerama to shoot and display. All major studios except Paramount shifted to using it. Paramount had other ideas though. They weren't impressed with the film grain found with a Cinemascope image, and so they developed their own system which they called VistaVision. VistaVision was based off of traditional 35mm film that was put to its side but recorded at a much wider aspect ratio of 1.85 to 1. The first VistaVision film was called White Christmas and was released in 1954. VistaVision was also pretty popular and would become Alfred Hitchcock's go-to aspect ratio for a lot of his films including North by Northwest and Vertigo. As you can see, the 50s really shook up the world of cinema. Many other widescreen formats were introduced during that time like Vistarama, Cine Miracle, and Superscope. For the next couple of years, filmmakers went even a step further and experimented with 70mm film to get different aspect ratio for different looks. 
though it was short-lived due to the high cost of 70mm film and equipment required for it. The very popular 16 by 9 aspect ratio that we've all grown to know and love actually came about much later in the 1980s when high definition television standards were introduced. 16 by 9 was originally brought up as a compromise between the 1.33 and 2.35 aspect ratios, which at the time gave the least wide and the widest motion picture standards available. 16 by 9 is actually the geometric mean between the 4 by 3 and 2.35 by 1 aspect ratio which means that both aspect ratios have about the same screen area when conformed to 16 by 9 standard if you include letterboxing. That was the birth of the most widely used aspect ratio to date, which has shaped much of everything in the digital media space from the television in your home to the display on your cell phone. 16 by 9 is mostly used in more mainstream applications like broadcast television or web video with the wider aspect ratio standards being used in cinematic productions. So there you have it folks, that is the story of aspect ratios in a nutshell. It all started out with a very square-like television image in the 1890s. We would then go to extremes by shifting to very wide aspect ratios in films with the introduction of the Cinerama 3 camera system in the 1950s. A few decades later in the 1980s, what was originally introduced as a compromise between what we were used to on television and what we loved about the visual aesthetic of cinema, 16 by 9 was brought to life and it would arguably become the most definitive change in digital media consumption in terms of motion picture. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video has been educational to you. Please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Catch you folks in the next one.